California in general is a get well zone for the oil companies. They always make their money here. And at this point, they're making fabulous profits. A local consumer group accuses California's oil refineries of price gouging at the pump. Searching for the cheapest gas in San Diego County, we'll give you a look. And an audit of credit card spending by Sandag employees raises eyebrows. A special story on a brave young boy that received a dual transplant here at Rady Children's Hospital. Plus, beloved former Charger Eric Weddle is back on the field as a local high school football coach. And a fantastic follow-up about a Boy Scout and his instrument donation drive. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. We begin tonight with breaking news. We're seeing newly released body camera video of a deadly shooting by San Diego police and sheriff's deputies in Little Italy. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee. A woman was shot and killed at a condo complex last week Thursday. Officers say she charged at them with a knife. And we do want to warn you that the images you're about to see are disturbing. Forty-seven-year-old Yan Li was being served with court paperwork, but investigators say when she answered the door, she was armed with a knife and was being uncooperative. They say Li barricaded herself in her condo, so the deputy who served her then called for backup. They say officers went in, and when Li refused to drop the knife, they shot her with a beanbag round. A San Diego police canine unit was also called in. Li can then be seen charging at officers with a large knife, and deputies say she stabbed the canine's handler. That's when three deputies and one police officer opened fire, killing Lee. The police officer who was stabbed has been treated and released from the hospital. The officers involved are all on administrative assignment until they are cleared to go back on duty. And we'll have more on this on later editions of CBS 8 News. And we're following more breaking news about a Ukrainian family that we've been telling you about all week. A mother and her three children are now finally safe in the U.S. tonight after being released from Custom and Border Protection San Ysidro Processing Facility just a short time ago. The family was turned away from the border by U.S. officials earlier this week after fleeing Ukraine late last month and making it to Tijuana. They were allowed to begin processing for entry into the U.S. yesterday and are now heading to family living up in the Los Angeles area. A consumer advocacy group says price gouging, not supply and demand, or the war in Ukraine is to blame for our skyrocketing gas prices. The group Public Watchdogs is calling on California Attorney General Rob Bonta to investigate. The group says San Diego's gas prices have risen by more than $1 per gallon in the last 28 days because there's no competition. It's sort of like if you... If you owned a hamburger stand and you found out that next month the price of beef was going to triple, so you tripled the price of your hamburgers today, that's really what they're doing. Public Watchdog sent a letter demanding action against the state's oil refineries to the California Attorney General yesterday. So far, there has not been a response from the Attorney General or oil refinery representatives. Meantime, with prices up nearly every day, San Diegans have been on the hunt for the least expensive gas in the county. CBS 8's Heather Hope shows you some options. And this Shell station here in National City has seen a steady stream of customers. And who would have thought 549 would be considered a deal? And that's what a lot of people have been coming for. $85, and I only took 14 gallons. Ready to get on the road, retired Mount Helix resident Greg Hill filled up at this 76 station on El Cajon Boulevard that Gas Buddy is listed as one of the cheapest places for gas in San Diego County. It's at $5.44 with cash and $5.59 with credit, but Greg paid $6.20 for diesel. I get good mileage, but it's still, I travel a lot, so it costs a lot. Just down the street at this Ram Mini Mart in El Cajon, gas was cheap at $5.30. 34 cents with cash, but Anna Jaquez paid with a credit card. Today, 540 something. So, yeah, I've noticed that it's hiked every day. With um, the cost of gas rising almost every day, many San Diegans are shopping around for the cheapest options. I figured I'll just I'll, I'd get half because I saw the price. At the stage stop in Ramona, gas costs $5.49. Then also on Main Street in Ramona, the Arco AMPM sells gas for $5.59. 
This Costco off Scripps Poway Parkway has a steady line stretching down the street with Costco members willing to wait for nearly an hour to pay $5.35 for gas. Joseph Alanini could not wait. Everybody is at Costco right now. I'm coming from there, okay, but I'm working and I can't spend one hour at the queue. He paid $5.49 at the Shell gas station in National City to fill up his delivery van of medical supplies for hospitals. This would cost me like $100 to fill it up. Next door, the Kangaroo Express slash 76 station has gas prices listed at $5.39, but it's been sold out for two days, and the clerk didn't detail why. Would-be customers there flock to the nearby Shell station. Other cheaper spots across the county include a 76 on Sunset Cliffs Boulevard in Ocean Beach at $5.34. Then an Arco on East Grand Avenue in Escondido has gas at $5.43. Then a Shell on Palomar Airport Road in Carlsbad has $5.68 for its gas. Heather Hope, CBS 8. And remember, you can text the word gas to 858-571-8888. We'll send you a link to find some of the stations with the lowest prices. An audit of credit card purchases by the staff at Sandag shows some questionable spending of hundreds of thousands of dollars of your taxpayer money. The independent auditor at the San Diego Association of Governments uncovered a lack of controls to keep credit card spending in check. CBS 8's David Gofferson takes a closer look at the findings. There just is a lack of documentation. The internal audit looked at four years of spending by the staff at Sandag using agency credit cards and taxpayer money. In December 2019, Sandag charged more than $20,000 on the credit cards to pay for an employee retreat at the Gaslamp Weston Hotel, billing it to federal, state, and local taxpayers. And just in the San Diego area alone, over four years, Sandag credit cards charged $45,000 at local restaurants, $17,000 at fast food restaurants, and more than $5,000 at drinking establishments. The elected officials on the Sandag board were shocked. I think there was like $60,000 that was used for restaurants locally, uh, which it shouldn't have happened, I don't believe, in many cases. And some of them could be even drinking alcohol. Taxpayer money is never supposed to be spent on alcohol, but the independent auditor noted in some cases it won't be easy to prove wrongdoing. Yes, we found, you know, several transactions that showed the merchant code is alcoholic. The problem is some restaurants, depending on where you go to, will put a merchant code that's alcohol when it's not. It's a soda that they get from a bar. In many cases, the credit card charges were not approved and the receipts were missing. The mayor of Carlsbad, who sits on the board, expressed his outrage. Management, you really dropped the ball on this one. Anytime you're dealing with public funds and we find out that after a period of time, this much money can't be accounted for, that doesn't say much for this, this establishment's leadership. The audit recommends more than a dozen corrective actions and new policies to prevent credit card abuse. Sandag CEO agreed to implement all of them. We're going to look at all of our procedure to make sure that we're transparent. Obviously, we're accepting all the findings. We need controls. Currently, uh, Sandag has about 16 credit cards issued to staff members. They're going to reduce that immediately to six. If any staff members are found to have made improper or personal purchase on the purchases on those credit cards, they may be asked to reimburse Sandag and the taxpayers. Well, David, how long is it going to take to put new policies in place to stop this kind of spending from happening again? The new policies uh, recommended to the board will have to be voted on and they should be voted on by the end of April. Uh, staff members that get to keep their credit cards will have to be trained and undergo annual training. Uh, the first round of training should be done by the end of July. And it sounds much needed. David Gofferson reporting live for us. Thanks, David. Two years ago today, the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 outbreak a pandemic. Do you remember that day? 
Boy, we've been through a lot the past couple of years, haven't we? On this day in 2020, the Dow plunged more than a thousand points. Airlines grounded flights and millions of people began losing jobs as the economy nearly came to a halt. While the market has been up and down lately, it is not even close to those 2020 levels. We will have today's closing numbers from Wall Street in just a few minutes. Fellow first responders joined together today to honor a beloved firefighter and hero to our community. They celebrated the life and service of Nick Ramirez, who died of complications from COVID-19. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol has more on today's tribute. It all started around 930 this morning here in Kearney Mesa, where dozens of fire trucks made their way for a procession honoring Deputy Fire Marshal Nick Ramirez. Those fire trucks, as well as local law enforcement, made their way to a private service where his family and friends honored his life. Take a look at this footage we have of this moving procession. We're being told his remains is being transported there in Engine 10. He's being described as one of the most friendly fire service employees around. This local firefighter passed away from COVID, which is considered the line of duty which is honored today with an official procession. Ramirez joined the fire department in 2003 and ended his career with the Community Risk Reduction Division. Those close to him say he was a family man who adored his wife and two daughters. He took his responsibility of patient care very seriously and exhibited an exceptional work ethic. He treated every patient as if they were members of his own. People say he always entered a room with a smile and never left without leaving smiles in the faces of others. We spoke to his supervisor about his lasting impact he has on San Diego. He was 59 years old at the time of his passing and just ready to enjoy retirement. Uh, he worked very, very hard for the department, 19 years of service. He was just about to get a recognition of service award from his division for, for his retirement. So it's kind of a, an unfortunate time, but he does leave behind a family that loved him very much and was very involved in the fire department. They were very much so a part in a lot of the activities. And uh, Mr. Ramirez, Nick Ramirez was very, very beloved, well-known and respected in the department. He's a fantastic paramedic. He's being remembered for his compassion with both his fire family and the patients he interacted every single day at the memorial service held this afternoon. I'm Dana Marie McNichol for CBS 8. Such a big loss. For the community, fellow firefighters, and of course his family, our hearts go out.